So we've had a range of different activity over this last two year programme. We have had learning groups which have been looking at um, participatory practice in different contexts. We've had seed funds which has been a, a little fund that has been driving innovation in the sector and we've also looked at um, events through CPD for artists and also um, a large conference that we had last November and we've also been um, driving research forward by um, having a relationship with uh, researchers Wendy Keybright and Leah McLaughlin. The seed funds were an opportunity for organisations or artists or commissioners or non-arts commissioners to bid in to have a small amount of money, a small pot of funding to think about an idea or a partnership or a particular relationship or a particular issue that they really wanted to drive forward. So it's about giving people permission in a way to say, right, we're going to make that happen ourselves. We're going to explore that. We're going to try something new. Um, and hopefully that will push forward participatory practice for the whole sector. We set out really to understand participatory arts within an expanded field. So to see different models of ways in which artists work with communities, how they managed to draw them in, uh, how they were funded, um, and also, and I think this was really important, how they not only worked with the community, so the, um, working with morale, working with uh, creativity and exploration of ideas, but also generated high-end art products as well. This particular piece of work was important because there's a number of organisations delivering really great training um, and it felt like well, there hasn't been any joint up thinking around how those training programmes could complement one another. We just saw this as a great um, opportunity to do something quite basic in many ways, asking some of those key questions about how you develop those projects in the first place, how you work with partners, and then um, to actually walk people through that process. The Seed Fund was translating cultural commissioning into a Welsh context. Uh, a lot of the kind of cultural commissioning pilots have taken place in England, in Kent and Gloucester. And for myself, it was really trying to find the essence of what that means for Wales. We realised that there wasn't enough information for young artists who were about to start work in the hospital setting. So we applied for a seed fund and we got together and we wrote different chapters and we wrote this toolkit. The project's based around the telephone box which is situated outside the museum in pont de Being able to build a stronger project in partnership than people would have been able to do on their own. I think um, if we can demonstrate how that works, I think that would be a really important um, learning for everybody really and something that hopefully can inspire other partnerships to happen elsewhere. What we asked people to do was to come and tell us their story in terms of how they arrived as dance practitioners and how they conceive their community, or sorry, I should say participatory practice. And we asked them to come with um, a provocative idea to challenge us all. The seed funding was towards us working with the staff and management at the, client, at the health service and um, enabling them uh, to include creativity in the way that they work with their service users. It's an important piece of work for the sector because we're working directly with staff and management. So it's a completely different way of working, which was such an excitement to do. We set out to um, create a set of tools to help teachers uh, reflect in their practice. It encourages them to not only um, be teachers, arts practitioners, uh, performers, it, it really engages them to keep uh, the, the education at, at the fore of their mind within their practice. We really wanted to make a space in the programme for artists to explore practice. Um, and one of the things um, that we developed in the first phase was this idea of a learning group and a learning group being a group of people coming together almost like an action learning set where they could consider the practice that was going on in a particular project. 
It's brilliant for getting people together and having that support for, you know, because we're working across South Wales, we're not necessarily working within the same health boards or within the same location, but we've got similar interests. So groups like this just help um, link up that network. So we're supporting each other and, and setting things up and learning. Sometimes working as an artist can be quite isolating. So it's just bringing all that together and, and feeling like we're, we're doing something together. So what we set out to explore in the learning group was how we could construct a network, a sustainable network in Wales, where emerging artists could refer to established artists uh, through, to be mentored, if you like. And we were supported to get creative around it. And, and I felt Artworks supported us to be really innovative and take this risk, and it's really paid off. By doing this workshop, all of us together, we're recognising the things that we're doing that are really good and really inclusive, but then also going, if I just did a little bit more of that, or I just thought about this, then I'm making this accessible to a whole wider group of people. The value is just having time and space to come together, to see each other, to actually genuinely talk about what it is that we do. So it, the idea was it would promote social inclusion um, for disabled people because we do actually want to involve non-disabled people as well and um, break down barriers between the two. It could, be, it could be mental illness, it could be an obvious disability, but we're trying to form it to everybody can come in and, and get creative. Also knowing that there were other learning groups going on in different areas at the same time and that we're all going to come together uh, you know, 18 months down the line and be able to share what we discovered along the, the way. I think that just having that framework, which was quite sort of loose but gave a context, I think was quite important. So last November, we all went to Slandering Dodd Wells for the final conference of this phase of activity. And this was the second Artworks Cymru conference. And really, I wanted to go back to the same venue that we, that we did for the first conference in April 2014. Um, bring people together again, consider what we'd done over the two years. So we had lots of practice-based sessions within the two days um, and lots of discussion as well. So I think we, we really needed that almost like a retreat to be able to consider what had happened, come together and then find a way to move forward. I think that Artworks has been vital in terms of bringing the sector together and really um, creating, as I said, for the conference, that space to share. Um, also, just taking ownership of some of those issues. I think sometimes in the art sector, we, we're guilty of waiting for funders to tell us what they want or to tell us, oh, well, you should be doing things this way. And actually, we are the people who know, we're the people that make that work, we're the people on the ground. Um, I think Artworks Cymru, in a way, has given permission for the sector to say, no, I'm going to take that issue forward, I'm going to own that, I'm going to, I'm going to make a difference, I'm going to drive things forward. Um, and Diane Hebb said this at the beginning of the conference, that, you know, really it was our work and that Artworks Cymru was there to show that the sector wanted to do that work, wanted to take it forward. Um, and that's the really exciting thing, I think, for the future.